break today. <laughs> but you can still, I mean, you can get something. I just wanted to, to keep, keep going with things. We've got a line forming by the coffee. That might be a good thing if you're going to listen to that. But it is short and hopefully, hopefully somewhat entertaining. It's been interesting for me. Um, a few months ago, Ward asked me to speak about um, the family of God. And so I you know, talked about that. And then this time, the message series comes around and we're talking about life. And Ward says, would you do the one on family? And I'm like, okay, God is, is you know, trying to get me to think about family a little bit, I think. Um, I'm a little dense. I haven't quite figured it out yet. But the great thing about God is when he wants to teach you something, you'll get it, and you'll get it again, and you'll get it again until you get it. So uh, I'm still working on it. The past month, I mean, this has sort of been appropriate because the past month I have been surrounded by family. Um, a month ago, we went to Ambridge, Pennsylvania, which is near Pittsburgh, to visit my sister-in-law uh, from my first marriage who lives there. And um, the reason, I mean, there were several reasons we went, but it sort of turned into a family reunion of sorts because her brother came in from Arizona. My son and his family came down from Rochester. Uh, my daughter and her, and her family came up from Virginia. And my son and his wife came from Seoul, Korea. So we had, you know, all over uh, coming into this one place. So after a few days there, we come back to Ithaca for a week, where we joined my Korean-based son and his wife in New York City for a few days. And, and it's not like we see them very often, so we've got family going on. Now keep in mind, I'm an introvert. Dealing with people just exhausts me. And, and so, I, you know, it's going downhill from here. So we get home from New York City, and a Dutch contingent invades our house. Marika's family and friends uh, came to stay with us for five days. Six of them did uh, from Holland for to, just for the wedding. So they were staying with us. Um, and last Sunday, we had Ashley Bergman's wedding, followed by Marsha's family reunion. And on Monday, we headed out to a packed Kuwait State Park to go camping which is where they were holding the, the wedding and rehearsal for Marika. So then we had the rehearsals and the dinners and the, and the wedding, more people. Um, and I don't know if you, you might not catch something. There's a subtle point in, in all this family. I mean, I spent a lot of time with a lot of people. Um, when usually one thinks of family, you think of mother, father, siblings, maybe aunts and uncles. And they were all present in one form or another, but I was not blood related to a single person in that, in that crowd. My children, as most of you may know, but not all, are all adopted, so even my children are not blood related. So one might ask, where is my biological family in all of this? Well, in brief, I'm an only child. Um, my mother passed away seven years ago, and my father lives in western Pennsylvania, about 300 miles away. So we don't see them very often. Um, as for my extended family, I spent my first 10 years living in Indiana, and my mother's family lived in Maine, a thousand miles away. My father's lived in Pennsylvania, New Jersey area, around Philadelphia. And that's 650 miles away. So, you know, you're talking about like two-day trips to go back and forth. And we didn't do it, and they didn't do it. My mother was the younger of two, siblings, of two girls. Um, we visited them twice in, in Maine. Um, and then twice later on, I went as a teenager and a young adult. But that was 40 years ago. I have not seen my mother's side of the family in 40 years. Um, my dad was one of ten. Now we're, now we're starting to increase the numbers. Um, his parents passed away when he was a teenager. I never, I never knew my grandparents on his side. We visited them twice as a child. 
Uh, since then, I've been there every five or six years because they tend to have some reunions or uh, at this point the aunts and uncles are starting to pass away, so I've gone to funerals because I, I've, got, you know, I've got to start making the connections or keeping the connections going. Um, I know all my dad's siblings by name, but not all their spouses. I have first cousins I have never met. Um, I'm only in regular contact with one of some 50 or 60 first cousins in, uh, in that area. So, as you can see, I'm not very familiar with family dynamics, with the drama that goes on among family members. Um, I don't know how to be a sibling. I never was one, never had one. I don't know much about uncles. I never had a role model. Um, a grandson, I, you know, I just didn't experience all those things. And so a lot of that's new. Enter Marsha. 15 years ago, 16 now. Almost 15. 15. Yeah, 15. Coming up on 15, yeah, sure. I'm like 16. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I met her family 16 years ago uh, at a family reunion where she said, here, I'll see you later. Um, anyway, she's one of five. One of them lives in Lansing, the McKays you may have met. One is in Auburn, and I've spent considerable time not only with them, but the ones in South Carolina and Texas. Um, her father is one of three, and many still live in the Binghamton area, and I know some of her cousins. Um, her mother is one of seven, and they still live in New York, and most of them are within about 30 miles, 30 minute drive. So um, we've seen them uh, regularly. I know all her nieces and nephews. I can name all her aunts and uncles on her mother's side anyway, and I know more of her cousins than I know of mine. I even know some of her second cousins. So um, aside from locality, and obviously we're only 30 minutes away we can get together. Why, do I, why am I so much more familiar with her family than my family? And in a word, intentionality. My parents never seemed much interested in visiting the family. We were too far away for the small life events like birthdays and things, even weddings. I think we went to one over the course of all that time. And there was no internet then. So there's no Skype, there's no FaceTime, there was no email, and long distance calls when I was a kid was 10 cents a minute. <laughs> so uh, there was not much contact, and that to me was normal. For Marcia, that's very non-normal. Uh, Marcia's family, on the other hand, <coughs> value the extended family. They, are, they, they see it important as to keeping in touch with one another. They organize small yearly family reunions for, the, for those in the area. And occasionally, every two or three years it seems like, they have a larger family reunion that even brings folks from uh, Saskatchewan, Canada down. There have been weddings, funerals, birthdays, anniversaries, and here's where proximity really helps because they all gather for these things. And Marcia loves her extended family. She brings them together at our home whenever she can. She's had special parties for her mom and her siblings. She includes them in invitations for Thanksgiving, New Year's, Easter, well, at least when we can make room and we haven't filled the house with, with all kinds of other people. So where am I going with all this? Well, like I said, I'm sort of still trying to figure out what God is having me to understand about family. But the uh, experience has given me a few observations that aren't hard to pass on. While there's not blood relation in the people I've met, it's like there's not blood relation with us and God. We are adopted into his family. We are grafted in to the root of that tree, to, that, to his family tree. With Jesus, we are joint heirs to the kingdom of God. Now, I saw some impressive houses when we were in the Thousand Islands. So I guess I didn't mention, the way State Park's in the Thousand Islands. So, um, we were up in the Thousand Islands, and it makes you think about 
being rich, being a king's kid. In fact, one of the most impressive houses there is the Bolt Castle. Literally, it, it does look like a castle. But with all its impressive structure and its many stories and this and that, it was never a home. The family never stayed there. It was always about what could have been, but never was. As believers, we are children of God. We are heirs to God's kingdom, a kingdom that hasn't yet been fully realized, but we are a part of it now. Our castle in heaven is finished. We just haven't got there yet. Our home is with our family here and there. Not our blood-related family, but our God-related family. It's a story of what will be, not what might have been. So while we wait, we can act like an only child with no extended family. I know at least one other only child in the group here. Uh, Akina and I can show you how to play board games by yourself. If you <laughs> we can also sh probably show you how to play a variety of sports by yourself. It is, it is possible, but not much fun. Or maybe you could sit at home and read the Bible in a few days. If you've done that, start over. Maybe another translation. You know, you can keep going. Watch TV, endless TV reruns on Netflix. Or you could wait and, and wait for someone to call or email you. A friend of mine used to say, the phone works both ways. Meaning, instead of waiting for me to call you, you could call me. It does go both ways. But what he's saying is, you have to be intentional about it. Somebody's got to take a step. Perhaps you can be intentional about reaching out to your family. In fact, I would say we are commanded to reach out to this family here. In John chapter 13, Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That intentional reaching out, love for one another, is a witness to the rest of the world that we have something different. Love in the gospel is not a warm fuzzy. It's an act of the will. Choosing to engage and being intentional about our relationship. In John 15, Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, which we just mentioned, to love one another, you will remain in my love, just as I keep my Father's command and remain in His love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. So the love of the Father, the love of one another, the love of the Father that flows through us, loving one another, brings joy. It's a witness, and it brings joy. And John reminds the church of Jesus' command to love one another in his letter to them, in 1 John. And this is a, his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he has commanded us. The family doesn't have to be blood-related. I've got a lot of not blood-related family. But it does need work. It does need time. When we adopted four children, we, be, we built a family. There were no accidents involved. There was no stork flew, flew from Korea over our house and dropped kids down every couple of years. It was intentional. We had to plan it, we had to think about it. And we have to, to maintain the family it takes intentionality too. So what I would like to have you think about for today is who you could reach out to in your family. Who can you be intentional about in reaching out to this week? Think about someone, say, in your immediate family that you haven't contacted. And I don't mean a text message, and I don't mean an email. Talk to them. <laughs> Maybe someone in your extended family, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, you haven't talked to in a while. And someone in your church family 
and not necessarily someone who's here today. Maybe think about somebody who's not here today. Call them, say, hey, thinking of you, missed you, what's going on? So, as you, as you sort of think about that a little bit, does anyone have a reach out to family story that, you know, might fit into this, into this thing? Donnie. Um, next weekend I'm going down to South Carolina to pick up my eight-year-old half-brother. And I haven't seen him probably since he was four. And uh, my, I just knew that would bless my mom so much to see him again. Cool. Because she's here. She lives in New York. And so reaching out to his father, allowing him to come out. It's just something I've prayed about for a long time. And just now, that prayer is being answered. So I can connect with my little brother. And so that my mom can connect with him as well. And, uh, and actually, my cousins here uh, offered to host him as well. So that's, that's drawing more family together, reminding more family together. Yeah. So, it's just amazing what God does. And he just clears schedules and it just fits, you know. It's just amazing. Anyone else? Well, um, this is actually kind of an older story, but um, there was this, um, I had a real good friend uh, in college and I sat and thought about them in a while and had a dream about them, and um, it just kind of got to speaking to me again. So I, and I had talked to, uh, I hadn't talked to her actually in probably, um, oh, at least five or six years or so. And I got in touch with her and talked to her, and um, turned out she was coming down to Alabama, um, where I was living at the time. She was living up here in New York. And um, her and her mom just happened to be coming through town. And um, you, you, know, you know both of them. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we ended up, um, I met her, and I was in a really kind of low and confused point in my life. And I walked up, and she walked in where I was working, and I saw her, and I was just like, it's my city. <laughs> and um, so six years ago today, we got married. That's where we Actually heading down to Long Island for about, I think about two weeks 
Kamigoshi, uh, I'm adopted from Kamigoshi, my adopted family, and also my mother, who also, she uh, suffered from alcoholism and some depression, and there were many times where uh, she could have died, and, and by the grace of God, and, uh, his love for her, uh, she's still alive, and, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to go see her, and uh, yeah, just tell her how much I love her, and, and actually she says she's she's been going to church, so I'm going to and I'll go with her to wherever church she's, she goes and uh, you know, just love her and, and read the word with her. So, Ward, can I, can I put you on the spot for a minute? Um, <laughs> is that, was that a yes or no? And I'm going, I'm going to anyway. I'm going to anyway. Not, it's not a story. It's a, it's a request. Um, I'm thinking maybe in a month. We, we could have a Sunday where we uh, talk a little bit about family and ask for, for stories back from people who went out and reached out and connected and, and see what see what happens see uh, see if we've got some you know hear, maybe hear back from Alex or or uh, Donnie as to as to how things went out and just maybe provide some opportunity for that anyway so that's just a suggestion so as we uh, continue on here, I wanted to say that for the offering today, we're not going to pass buckets around. There's a bucket at each side of that door over there. You brought an offering with you. Leave it the bucket. Um, oh. and, and as an announcement, the restrooms are on, on the other <laughs> side of that building. For those who don't know, they're around the other back side of that building. Backpacks. Oh, if you're, Susie. I have some backpacks Go here. If it. you're interested, we are blessing um, some middle school students uh, through Catholic Charities, and we're hoping to be able to donate um, 30 filled backpacks. So I have a couple backpacks here if you want to pick one up, and I have school supply lists. And what you do is you just um, go shopping, buy the things on the list, bring them back to church next week. Um, or the 14th. 14th is the last day we need to get them to the kids by the time school starts. Um, so see me, I'll be running around the playground uh, today with that one. And um, see me, or just I'm going to leave the backpacks on the, on the front table here with the school supply list if you have questions and stuff like that. I'm looking for somebody to, um, to person the table over the next two weeks because I'm going to be out of town. So if you can help with that, um, and all you have to do is just write down what people drop off or, or pick up backpacks, I would really, truly appreciate it. So I'm going to be visiting my family next week. So, um, yeah, just let me know. Thanks. Any other announcements? If not, um, I'd like to uh, close this in prayer, and then Ward will come up and, and uh, lead us in communion. Father, we thank you for family. We thank you that you have adopted us into your family through Jesus Christ. And I pray that you would touch the hearts of each one here to reach out to someone in their family that they haven't talked to in a while. That you would bless that conversation. That you would be with them and bring the joy and the love that you can give. We ask this in the name and for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.